<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Triad Travelogues. I am Richard, coming at you today from the outskirts of Shanghai, China to talk to you a little bit about dealing with mental illness when you are traveling abroad. Now some of you may already know this, but I suffer from mental illness. Um, luckily, uh, I'm 35 years old and I've mellowed out quite a lot. And a lot of the problems that I had when I was young are not nearly as pronounced now as they were when I was in my 20s, my early 20s. Um, so the, the mental issues that I have are not debilitating. I'm able to function. I can go to work. I can socialize. I can maintain relationships with people. It's just that I'm not very good at doing those things. Uh, and I think it takes me a little bit more effort and a lot more stress to deal with just basic life things uh, when compared to a normal person. Now, I don't like to romanticize mental illness and I don't wanna talk about myself too much because that's not what this video is about. I just wanna talk about in general uh, what it's like to travel abroad to go to another country um, while also having to deal with uh, mental illness. So uh, another, another thing that is probably good to understand as we're talking about this is I used to work in special education. I worked actually for seven years as a teacher in various capacities. Uh, in special education, I worked with kids with autism. I worked with kids with uh, opposition, uh, oppositional defiance disorder and attention deficit disorder, and uh, you know, kids on the on the uh, 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 autism spectrum, PDD kids, and so I, I have a, a, a pretty good sense of uh, mental illness. I've been around it a lot, not just mental illness, but developmental disorders and psychological conditions and so on and so forth. Uh, in addition to my own personal demons and um, having dealt with other people's demons, um, I also grew up in a home uh, with a lot of mental illness all around me. Uh, a lot of my, the people that I've just naturally gravitated towards, some of my best friends have been, have had serious mental problems. A lot of people in my family. So I've been around it I've been around it so much that it's almost become kind of normal to me. Um, but I live in Shanghai, China now. Originally, I'm from Dallas, uh, Texas. I lived in Baltimore, Maryland for 10 years. And when I talk about this kind of stuff, like with my wife, she just, she doesn't get it. She doesn't understand it. Uh, because it's not something that people talk about here. And that's kind of what I want to get into is, um, you know, is that experience of being from a place like the United States, which obviously in the United States, we've got some issues in terms of dealing with mental illness. Um, I think, you know, that's kind of where I am on the gun debate. I really think we need to, we need to have some honest discussion um, and some better solutions to the mental illness problem that, that we have in the States. Um, you know, I don't think that's the only problem, but that is obviously a problem and it affects a lot of people. Now, I've heard somebody, well, I've heard more than one person here in China tell me that, well, China's better, China's better than America because if you walk around in America, like if you walk around in New York, you're going to just see like disabled people. You're going to see people in wheelchairs and you're going to see like mentally retarded people you don't see any of that in china like you walk around shanghai you don't see those people so china's better because of that i've heard this argument a couple of times now obviously it doesn't take uh that much intelligence to realize the problem with that argument that argument actually proves the opposite of what it's trying to prove the reason that you don't see mental illness or developmental disabilities or even just like physiological disabilities here in China is because people are so ashamed of them that they lock their relatives away uh, like they don't come out it's something that is shameful and is not talked about 
and is not acknowledged. Now, I'm, you know, I'm not painting this broad picture of China, but it, it really is, you know, it is true that if you walk around any major city, you're not gonna see a lot of, like even kids with Down syndrome or kids with obvious PDD or obvious autism, you do see it, but you don't see it nearly as often as you do in the United States. And that's because in the United States, it's more socially, I don't wanna say accepted, but it's just understood that these conditions exist and that we, you know, in, if we have, if we want to have a, 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 a reasonably free and compassionate society, we have to deal with the fact that these people exist. Even some of them are violent or some of them uh, cause damage to society. We got to deal with these issues with compassion. And it's not like that in China. In China, um, there's a lot of emphasis put on face you know the concept of face which is this weird sort of value system that is i don't even know how to describe it but in layman's terms it's basically like it's the most important thing that defines a person's identity is the way that other people look at them and so if they do something stupid or they have something that puts a blight on their family name it brings their face down like they lose face and if they do something cool or if they like have a kid that succeeds in school or whatever their face is brought up so they gain face instead of losing face i'm not i'm not saying that very clearly because it's not a concept that i really understand but the point is that you know this is maybe a controversial thing to say, but it is the truth. For the majority of people having a, in China, having a disabled child makes you lose face. Especially when, because when it's a physiological disability, I think it's a little more tolerated because what can you do? But when it comes to mental conditions, I, I don't think there's as much of an education publicly about um you know like if you have a, a kid that behaves badly you're gonna have people just think that you're a bad parent you know if your kid's hitting other kids and can't be controlled it's you know people are gonna say oh there's something wrong with the parent and that makes the parent lose face so you really don't see a lot of these kids with you know with disabilities and I went off sort of on a tangent there, but I think that's important to understand because if you're a person with mental illness coming to China to like, to work or you need to function, you know, in some way, like if you're not really wealthy and just backpacking around and you don't have to worry about anything, but if you need to function in society in any way, um, you're gonna need to, to have a good grasp of reality and you're gonna need to be grounded. Um, so, you know, if, if obviously, if you have some kind of mental uh, or psychological or developmental uh, issues, you're gonna have a hard time here. You're gonna have a harder time here, I think, than you would have in the United States where your condition is at least accepted or people try to be a little bit more tolerant. I'll give you an example. In the United States, I worked in the public school system. I worked for a private school as well. And we have something called mental health days. And they're just like sick days or um, vacation days or whatever. If, if I'm feeling not right, and because special education is a really difficult, <clears throat> excuse me, special education is a really difficult industry and it can really, it can wear you down mentally um and in my opinion a lot of people that some well a lot of the people that are attracted to special education already are a little bit off myself included um so you know we have mental health days and you can just call your boss and you can say uh i need a mental health day and they'll say okay they're not going to ask you any questions i just need to take a day off to recuperate mentally 
in China, like if I called my boss and I said, hey, I need a mental health day, he'll be furious. I mean, he'll be angry. And he also would not understand just fundamentally what that even meant. And you know, I'm in East Asia, in Japan, there is a word for a person who dies from working too much. Okay, they have a word for it. It's such a common phenomenon that they actually have a word. I don't remember what the word is, but they have a word for people who just work so hard and don't sleep and they just, they do it until they just die from it. And that's the mentality in East Asia. You know, in general, it's like, you need, a, you need to push through things, you know? If you have, if you got a mental problem, you need to just suppress it because they're gonna look at you as weak. If you're somebody that needs time off to recuperate mentally, you need a mental health day, you're weak. And there are a lot of people in East Asia and, you know, you're probably pretty easily replaceable. There's a lot more pressure put on men here too to provide for their family and their extended family and their wife's extended family. Like, dudes have a really difficult time here. You know, they have a lot of pressure put on them. And because of the fact that people don't really talk about mental illness, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's just this thing that, like, it's not even acknowledged. And I've worked with kids here in China that very obviously have some serious problems and everybody just pretends it's not happening. At the, and this happens at the public schools, it happens at the training centers. I even worked with a kid in his home and his whole family was in denial that he was severely, I wanna, you know, I'm not a diagnostician so I don't know what, is, what he had, but he definitely, had, he was on the spectrum I think. And it was pretty severe, it was noticeable, immediately noticeable. But his parents were in denial and nobody talked about it. Nobody wanted to talk about it. So, you know, these kids that have these problems, they're not being helped. Um, they're just kind of being brushed aside. They just We just pretend it's not happening. And because of that, you know, and because that encompasses, you know, the culture at large, it's, it's rough. If you have a mental problem, you're gonna have a hard time at work. Now, socially, uh, socially it is the same kind of thing but it's it looks different when you're dealing with like friends because <clears throat> sorry I've had a cold the last couple of weeks uh, it's different when you're dealing with friends because you know I spent a year in Nepal and before I left for Nepal I met this guy who is kind of like a guru from the United States that would he would talk to people that were about to leave the States to go to Nepal and give them advice. And one of the pieces of advice he gave us was, you know, being quirky and being weird and being abnormal, in the United States, it can work. It can be sort of this thing that you that is infused with your identity and people will accept it and call it eccentric. And you can use it you can use it to your advantage you know like it's it's we got a lot of weird quirky people in the united states and it's a melting pot and it's a, you know they're they're odd people and we just sort of accept it some people like them some people don't but you always can find somebody that will that you can jive with that that you're on the same wavelength with he said in nepal it, you can't do that in nepal you have to fit in and it just, and I think that's an Asian thing. Just in general, you just really need to fit in. Especially in China, conformity is so important. Being like everyone else and sort of having the same opinions as everyone else and not really stirring the pot and having the same ambitions and the same ideas. And, it, and, and it's pretty extreme in this culture. So, when you're dealing with people socially, and I'm talking about Chinese people or other A Asian people, you know, not expats, because when you're around expats, obviously you're dealing with, with a, lo a lot more cultural similarities. But when you're dealing with Chinese people, um, they, do not, they do not like things that are not normal. And if you deviate from normalcy in any way, 
you're going to have issues and uh, nobody's gonna be violent to you you're not gonna get you're not gonna get hurt it's just that they the you're gonna be a weirdo and they're gonna avoid you so it's hard to be social when you come off as odd when you're not normal um, another thing about also about coming to uh, China from the United States or from a place where uh, people are heavily medicated you know in, in the US you've got uh, 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 dextroamphetamine or stimulant drugs for ADHD or for ADD you've got um, like SSRIs for bipolar disorders or de depression uh, disorders and some people are um, well I don't the word addicted is not the right word to use but some people are uh, entirely dependent on these medications to keep themselves stable uh, I've known many many of these people I at one point was one of these people and there are a lot of uh, medications that you cannot get here I'm pretty sure you can't get Adderall here or Ritalin I'm pretty sure you can't get any stimulant drugs legally I'm not sure about the antidepressants but I know it's harder here and um, yeah it's not as easy to go about getting psychiatric drugs it's also not as easy uh, to get a psychiatric diagnosis here because the culture is so different and these things are looked at so differently that you know when you're dealing with people uh, in medicine like doctors or diagnosticians or psychologists or psychiatrists or whatever um, that you know unless you're you're dealing with like an international hospital or a person from another country or a person at least who understands that you know these these differences in the cultures you're gonna have a hard time um, especially if you came here on you know if you come to China and then you have bipolar 2 disorder and you run out of SSRIs you're gonna have some problems and it might not be a problem that can be fixed without going back home. Um, okay, I want to I want to close this out by just talking a little bit about just the experience of travel in general. I talk about travel on my channel, and my channel is primarily about long-term travel. I've been traveling the world for the last five years. I'm stuck in China right now, um, but I've gone through a lot. Um, I had some pretty serious issues in my early 30s. I, um, I refer to them as my demons, and I beat a lot of those demons, but I do, still, I do still have some issues that I deal with. One of the things that, that anybody, even a person who doesn't suffer from mental illness, one of the things that most people deal with when, when they're traveling long term is culture shock. And I have another video on my channel um, from a few years back that's called uh, The Truth About Culture Shock. And that video never got any traction. It hasn't been viewed much. But I really like that video. Uh, it talks about what culture shock really is, which is a debilitating depression. And uh, it's difficult to describe, but it is like a temporary mental illness. It's like a temporary depression. And depression is not just sadness. Depression is something much deeper than that um so if you are traveling long term and you already suffer from some kind of mental illness culture shock man it is not pleasant and i speak from experience culture shock is not pleasant um so yeah it, it just all of the because there's all these new things you've got new sounds new sites you have to deal with new ways of interacting with people uh, a lot of the cultural differences can become really frustrating especially if you stay in the same place for a long time or you're working in a country that's very different than yours and you have to deal with co-workers um, that have a much different uh, expectations of you and ideas about the world and that really can trigger some underlying conditions even for a normal or a reasonably normal person so those are some things you have to watch out for because it's just like they say you shouldn't take drugs, you know, especially, well, you shouldn't take any drugs if you have pre-existing psychological conditions that you're aware of. And I think that is something that really 
caused my problems to get much, much worse when I was in my 20s. I did a lot of drugs and I, it definitely, it upped the ante and, and it made me very um, unstable for, for a decade. It's really windy, I'm sorry. I'm almost done with, with, with this video, okay? I just wanna say, yeah, uh, travel is the same way, long-term travel. I'm not talking about taking a vacation. I'm talking about long-term travel where you are not at home, where everything is foreign to you, where you might not be able to speak to people, to communicate with people, where you miss your friends and your family and the food from your home country and the smells and the weather and the atmosphere and just everything. And it can build up and it can make a normal person lose their mind for a little while. So these are some things you gotta watch out for if you're traveling with mental illness. I wanna say one more thing and then I'm gonna go to the family mart and get something to drink and then go to work. I, I, my last couple of videos on this channel uh, have not been very positive. And I, I don't want you to get the impression that I, I am uh, discouraging you from traveling. The reason I started this channel is because I wanted to, the main reason that I started the channel was because I wanted people to travel. I want to encourage people to travel. I think everybody should travel. Um, I think you should travel, uh, it, you know, and I think it's one of the most important things that you could do with your life. And, I, and you should start young, do it in your 20s, because I didn't start until I was 30 and I wish I'd started earlier. So, you know, I'm not saying people with mental illness shouldn't travel. I have mental illness, I'm traveling, I'm dealing with it. I'm just saying, you gotta be careful, you gotta know what you're, what you're getting into, and you need to make accommodations for yourself, because uh, in a place like this, people are not gonna make accommodations for you, and if you're somebody that's used to people understanding and giving you a little bit of leeway, um, yeah, that's probably not gonna happen here. So just keep that in mind, I gotta go. Uh, thank you so much for watching Triad Travelogs. I'm Richard, we will see you next time.